So class 10C, as you all know, we have finished with the reading of the play proposal. And before I proceed on to the next chapter, let us just quickly just revise what was this in this play. Yes. So who all were there, the characters in this play? We had, there was even, right? There is, uh, was it Stepan Shubakov and Natalia, right? And even has come there to propose to Natalia, but things do not turn out in a nice way. Why? Because even and Natalia, they end up, you know, like having arguments. And it's not once, but twice the situation arises. So it seems in both times, even is unable to propose to Natalia. And now the both of them, they argue over these petty issues. First time when he goes, there is the argument regarding that who owns Oxen Meadows, isn't it? That is regarding the property, where, who has this land. And it enlarges or it increases into such a loud argument where they behave, uh, you know, like even worse than children, I would say, right? So even children, you know, like they'll stop at a point of time. So here, but these two of them, they just go on with the argument. And when Natalia's father comes, he thinks that even has proposed to his daughter, but no, he's surprised to see all this uh, screaming and yelling happening on. And instead of controlling them and sorting out the situation, he also joins in. And then they go on talking about their family, their ancestors, et cetera, et cetera, right? Even as it is, he has a health issue. He thinks that he's feeling very unwell, he leaves. Natalia, she comes to know from her father that he had come to propose to her. She's very disappointed that the man has gone without asking her hand in marriage. So she wants him back. Just see, a minute ago, this man had been sent away that, uh, yes, you're this, you're that and whatnot. And the very next moment, the father goes and calls him back because he says it, nobody knows how difficult it is to be the father of a daughter, right? And yes, for the children, the parents, they have to you know, do so many things. So he goes and calls him back and he thinks that now, and even now, you know, like, yes, uh, right in the first instance, he did not tell his daughter that she had, he had come to propose. Now he knows, and even Natalia knows the reason. She's trying to be polite and uh, trying to make up uh, for her behavior, the, what she had done last time. But what happens? Again, an argument begins. This time, what do they argue about? Whose dog is better, which seems a very petty issue, right? And this is why, in the sense, you know, your play kya hai, it is a farce, right? That means in a very humorous, exaggerated way, the, you know, like uh, the true situation has been shown, whether it is about arguments, it's about anger management, it's about uh, marriage. So all this has been out of a proportion. Right? little petty issue. You know, they both start arguing about the dogs. Whose dog is better? Why, why did you spend so much of money on your dog? It's not even worth it. Right? And yes, uh, that your dog is an old dog. And the other person says that your dog was not even chasing the foxes. It was going after the sheep, isn't it? And yes, so here, all these things happening. And then in the end, what happened? Even he's having palpitations. He's almost feeling as if he's going to die, but he does not give up the argument because his argument was much more important than his health, according to him. And then yes, he's given water and calm down. And uh, Stephen uh, uh, thinks, uh, again, the situation is going to get out of hand that he will never propose. Right, so he you know quickly just hurries up everything. But okay, fine, he wants to propose, and she's accepted, and he hurries up everything, right, and sorts out the matter before they start off with another argument. But then there are things that, as I told you, anger issues about anger management. Do we need to argue so much over trivial issues? Where is the maturity? Are these people here? Like we know about Natalia, that she's well-educated. She's uh, from a good family. She's a homely person. But yes, so she should have known when to stop and when to carry on with the argument. Even also uncaring, unconcerned about his health, he goes on arguing and arguing, right? 
Yes, so here it is. And how are they going to lead a happy life if they have, you know, such anger issues? Uh, uh, do you think their life will be peaceful or it will always be uh, lots of arguments every day? Right. So naturally, yes, we need to manage our anger. We need to control it, especially in delicate situations where things would get out of hand. Right. And uh, sometimes it's always better just to keep quiet and turn away before the situation boils up. OK. Right. So this is about the play proposal. Now, any doubts, any questions, questions I'll be sharing with you all. Right. And uh, we'll be completing uh, just like a very less questions I'll be giving you, four or five questions, which you can write in your notebook. And a reminder for you all, please keep on sending me your notebooks for checking, right? I think so at the most two chapters are okay, but don't send them. I have not got sermon at Benares. Nobody has sent that chapter to me for checking, right? Yes? So please uh, send them. And uh, yes, so can we start with the next chapter? You have sent? Okay, Shivansh, I haven't checked your work, I think so. Right, okay, so if you have, then very good. Others not sent, so please send it. And uh, I'll be uh, sharing with you the question answers of this play also. We've done the textual questions, we've discussed the exercises. So if uh, maybe a character sketch or about the argument, little minor details which are there. So I'll be asking you questions about that. Right now, the next chapter that we are going to do it is about what one we're doing making of a scientist. So, if you remember, we have started reading uh, that chapter. Do you remember? We term one, end of your term one, I think so. So, one or two days we ha had we started the reading of the chapter, but we stopped it in between. Right. So, what is this chapter about? It's about a scientist and uh, how. Yes. It's about Richard E. Bright and the, the situation in his life, the environment in his life, how it made him become a scientist, right? So it was that as a young child, he did not have many friends. And uh, yes, uh, he was, uh, you know, like uh, at home and he, he was uh, not able to, you know, like he did not have company, but so his mother, made it sure that he did not waste his time and uh, she made him busy by you know bringing him books and uh, so many things uh, to uh, indulge in and uh, how he became a scientist right or rather it is through a number of mistakes that he made he learned what science actually is so you people are studying science and uh, do you know what is uh, uh, like a scientist, a real scientist. Yes? What is a, a scientist supposed to do? How can we develop a scientific mind, a scientific temperament? Do you think stating facts is science? Right? Is it science? I, I just tell you so many things. Okay, this is what uh, the butterfly looks like. This is what all this is there. What is science? Yeah, how do we develop a scientific mind? Yes, a science is a person who discovers new things, who does a lot of research, right? Yes, what is a scientific mind? Can anybody tell me? Yes, science is exploring the world. Science is exploring so many things. Now, how can we make a scientist? Can we make a scientist? Are there any special ingredients? That I need to have, okay, let me put a little bit of hard work, determination and all this together and uh, voila, a scientist made. What are the qualities of a scientist? Yes, curiosity, very good. The most important thing is curiosity, right? Scientists have to have that keenness, that desire to learn. You, you are there, you know, like, of course, why, why does this happen? Why do things work the way they do, right? So when you want to learn the answers of so many things which are around you, you have that curiosity, okay? And it is something, you know, that we can't force upon someone. It is something that is natural also, right? 
So yeah, you have questions, you want to seek the answers and you make your own trials and uh, you know assumptions and then you come to some kind of a conclusion. This is how science works, isn't it? Right? So we are going to learn about Richard E. Bright. Right, a, a young boy. And of course, uh, there's a book in his life that changed him. He's going to read about butterflies. Then he's going to learn about science versus facts, right? And in your projects also. So you get so many projects to do, but a project which makes you find out things, you know, like, yeah, you have to do a little bit of research work. You have to find information and you come to a conclusion, right? Or maybe you have to do a little work yourself, a little bit of experimentation yourself, observations and all. That is what develops your scientific curiosity, okay? Right, so a young boy, it is here once again. Yes, it is not, uh, you know, like uh, something that you're born with. You can develop that interest. So we've had many scientists around and how a simple incident that happened in their lives and it changed the whole outlook, right? So whether it was Archimedes, whether it was Newton, we talk about Albert Einstein, isn't it? A very intelligent person and how, they have given us so many things about science, isn't it, right? So simple here, you have a microscope and you want to fiddle around with it, you want to observe things, maybe you might chance upon something new. You have a telescope, you're looking, you're gazing at the stars, right? You like to look at the stars and you find something new. It, it is not, you know, like by chance, but it is there, yes, you have to constantly observe, and yeah, you do notice something new and notice something different, okay? Right, so how did this little boy become a scientist? Right, it is not indulgeness uh, actually, Rishad, it is your, your determination. It is your de determination, okay? So we're going to read this chapter once again here, that is about Richard E. Bright. So at the age of 22, A former scout of the year excited the scientific world with a new theory on how cells work. Richard H. E. Bright and his college roommate explained the theory in an article in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Science. See, even nowadays, right, we're in the middle of this pandemic and we know how scientists have been working day and night. And it is because of their research, because of their efforts. We're so ready to complain and we're so ready to you know, put aside the things, you know, their hard work and all. But it is because of that. Yes, so we got the vaccine. The doctors were able to find some medicine. It is they have used the prior information and from what they're able to collect, isn't it? Right? So here it is. So scientists, it is not an easy job. You need a lot of dedication. You need a lot of patience, right? And of course, uh, yes, it takes a lot of courage to be a scientist. So a former scout of the year, we read this. It was the first time this important scientific journal had ever published the work of college students in sports that would be making the big leagues at the age of 15 and hitting a home run, your first time at bat. So it's like this journal did not have articles by college students, but it's the first time ever. Why? Because the discovery was so important. What was it? It was a theory on how cells work. So you've been doing science and you read about cell division, you read about the parts of the cell, everything there. And you never wondered that how did people come to know about this? how much efforts they must have made. And that too, at such a time when we did not have such a sensitive instruments, right? So it's like that only, it's like, you know, ki, yeah, so a young person at a very young age is there a part of the Indian team, the Indian cricket team or any other national team, right? And only, and for Richard E. Bright, it was the first in a long string of achievements in science and other fields. And it all started with butterflies. 
सो कहीं तो स्टार्ट हुई है हिज जर्नी एज अ साइंटिस्ट एंड हाउ डिड इट स्टार्ट इट स्टार्टेड विद बटरफ्लाईज an only child ebright grew up north of reading pennsylvania there wasn't much i could do there he said i certainly could not play football or baseball with a team of one but there was one thing i could do collect things so he did and did he ever beginning in kindergarten ebright collected butterflies so people very rarely you know you come across people collecting butterflies we have people collecting coins and stamps butterflies very rare with the same determination that has marked all his activities he also collected rocks fossils and coins he became an eager astronomer too sometimes star gazing all night so he was an astronomer also like looking at the stars because he just loved doing things and his mother also wanted to keep him busy and uh, right so he was surrounded with these activities which gradually developed his interest right so he was star gazing at night also astronomer bhi tha from the first he had a driving curiosity along with a bright mind even he was also curious he also had a mother who encouraged his interest in learning she took him on trips brought him telescopes microscopes cameras mounting materials and other equipment and helped him in many other ways and nowadays do you think students will be happy with this kind of uh, you know like a present they got or these kind of things if you got a telescope you got a microscope you want your gadgets and all big leagues ka matlab ye hai ki big you know like teams ke sath ki jaise ki tum bahut young age mein tum log tumhe ek international level pe ya ek national team mein khelne ka mauka mila right so this journal did not have articles by young scientists and college students to bilkul bhi nahi right so you know like it is a big achievement like uh, someone there you know like uh, uh, completing his degree at a very young age in the age of 18 or something so just like that it was a big achievement that this young scientist and a college student his article appeared in the journal jisme bahut high you know renowned scientists with their articles his article was also like you are playing your youngster but you are playing with very experienced players right okay so you you got the chance to represent you got the chance to play so big leagues right okay any other doubt anybody any other doubt so he has got all these equipments his mother used to bring books for him microscopes and things and they would go round to many places so he got a lot of equipment right i was his only companion until he started school his mother said after that i would bring home friends for him but at night we just did things together richi was my whole life after his father died when richi was in third grade so till school he was alone right and his mother was his only friend and then yes sadly his father died and uh, she was the only companion he had when he started going to school yes he did make friends she and her son spent almost every evening at the dining room table if he didn't have things to do i found work for him not physical work but learning things so see she was very smart she always kept her child busy ki kahin na kahin to put to curiosity would be there he liked it he wanted to learn and learn he did he earned top grades in school on every day things he was just like every other kids he was good in studies but otherwise he was like a normal kid in games and other stuff just like other students were By the time he was in the second grade, Ibright had collected all twenty-five species of butterflies found around his hometown. Do we even look at the butterflies around us? Have you noticed butterflies coming to the flowers there in your house? Do we give attention to that? We just see, oh, how beautiful! Look at its color. Have you ever tried to see how many kinds of butterflies are there? kitni kinds of birds aate hain hamare ghar mein have you noticed no we don't 
So the, see this young boy at a young age, right? He must have been eight years old, nine years old. Do you notice? Okay, so right, so here, look at it. He has noted all this down. These were the kinds of butterflies and he had collected their specimens, right? So he knew about all the species which were there in his hometown. So what, 25 species. We, we'll barely know the difference, isn't it? Right, so some of them look so same. And uh, yes, yeah, so here we have the monarch butterfly, we have the viceroy. All these are going to be very important in his discovery. That probably would have been the end of my butterfly collecting. See, I, I've collected all the butterflies which are in my area. Now what to do next? I have to go to some other place to find the butterflies. But then my mother got me a children's book called The Travels of Monarch X. That book, which told how monarch butterflies migrate to Central America, opened the world of science to the eager young collector. So we have people here, you have botanists, we have zoologists there, right? So we have people who are interested in animals, their movements, right? And uh, so here, by chance, his mother, she gave him this book on this butterfly, the monarch butterfly, and how it migrates. And when he started reading it, when he learned so much, his interest in butterflies grew even more. At the end of the book, readers were invited to help study butterfly migrations. They were asked to tag butterflies for research by Dr. Frederick A. Oquart of the University of Toronto, Canada. Ebright's mother wrote to Dr. Oquart, and soon Ebright was attaching light adhesive tags to the wings of monarchs. Anyone? who found a tag butterfly was asked to send the tag to Dr. Quart. So right, so he, he started that. He, how far do these butterflies migrate? Rick tag, tag kya hai? Yes, what's the tag you put on the, these butterflies or animals also? So as to locate them, we were able to identify that this was the animal that we had tagged and noted down. And let's see how far it reaches. So what was that person supposed to do? What did he do, Ibrahim? He started tagging the butterflies. On Kupar Ek, they say, mark Lagadia, right? Label. And then when it would reach some other place, somebody else was able to find it in another place, what was he supposed to do? Us tag whom was he supposed to send it to? Dr. Ukwat, right? So he's the author of this book, okay? Right. Now, the butterfly collecting season around reading lasts six weeks in summer. If you're going to chase them one by one, you won't catch very many. So the next step for Ebright was to raise a flock of butterflies. He would catch a female monarch, take her eggs and raise them in his basement through the life cycle. So eggs or, or next hair, the pupa and the larvae and all these things at different stages. Then he would tag the butterfly's wings and let them go. So for seven years, his, several years, his basement was home to thousands of monarchs in different stages of development. Now, all of you look at this here. So we have a graph, isn't it, right, of information and we're doing data interpretation. Can you tell me something about this? What is it that you note about this information? Yes? So how many kinds of uh, butterflies uh, has he collected? So we have the snout, monarch, whites and sulfurs, brush-footed, wood nymphs and setters, gusama winged, right. Okay, highest number of butterflies collected. Which is the highest number of butterfly collected? Yes, which is the highest collected? Which one? Look at this uh, data and tell me. Brush footed, okay. Lowest, lowest, lowest concept butterfly we collect. Which is the least one collected? Right, the least is the monarch and the snout, okay. Right, and yes, he was reading about, which book was he reading? Which book was it? The Travels of the Monarch X. 
but how many of them came back? How many were he able to collect? Not many. He was able to collect other kinds of butterflies, but not the monarch, isn't it? So yes, so monarch and snout, that was it. Fine? Yes. Now we have here, look at this. Eventually I began to lose interest in tagging butterflies. It's tedious and there's not much feedback. Ibright said, in all the time he did it, only two butterflies I tagged were recaptured and they were not more than 75 miles from where I lived. So he was not able to collect many butterflies or tag bhi kaha se hue? Kaha se wo mila tag? It was not more than 75. So that means they've not traveled much, they've not gone very far. And uh, so it is, it did not solve the purpose that he was studying for. Okay, now here, Yes, there are some questions over here. How did a book become a turning point in Richard Ebright's uh, life? Which book are we talking about? Which book became a turning point? Yes? Which book? Come on, tell me quickly. All of you should know the answer. Which book became? The Travels of the Monarch X. Very nice. How did his mother help him? How did his mother help him? Yes, what did she tell him to do? She got him all the material and she kept him busy. She got him books, she got him microscopes, telescopes, all the material. Yes, so by bringing him books and by bringing him material also, equipment also. Right, yes. So what were the things that he liked to do? What are the things? What are the things he collected? What were the things uh, he bright, uh, collected? Yes, he collected butterflies. Yes, how many species of butterflies did he collect? I have only two students answering me. I have only two students answering me, that's it. 25 species of butterflies he collected, right? Okay, but what is this chart about? What is this graph about? When he tagged those butterflies, when he tagged those butterflies, how many came back? How many was he able to collect? You know, right? So he was there, right? The monarch was not. So he got a little disappointed. What else did he do apart from butterfly collection? What else did he do? Yes, what are the other things that he did apart from collecting butterflies? What was it? Come on, hurry up, give me the answers. Yes? Yes? 